Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to another tutorial video. So for this one, we're gonna be looking at a method that I do for vocal parallel compression. I used to use a limiter. I would take it, bust to another track, squash it with a limiter to beef up the compression in the vocal. But for this one, I came across a new technique that I wanted to try. I got this from an engineer that I visited and he did this for drums. And I just now remembering, I was like, wait a minute, I can do this for vocals too. So let me show you what I'm doing here. The track that you're listening to is called WYA by Kareem Malik. And I'm currently in the mixing phase of it. I'm in the very beginning, but I decided to go ahead and show you this parallel compression technique because I thought it would be helpful even though I'm in the beginning stages of this mix. So let me give you a rundown. Here is his recorded acoustic vocals. All of these right here. They're all going to this VOC bus unless they're going to a sub bus first, then they go to the VOC bus. So we got the hook which is labeled H and as you see the H and the other ones are going to this VOC bus. Here's my VOC bus. Now what you can look here you will see the sends 2a bus 76 these are all different types of compressors and the compressors that i'm using i'm using all of the native instruments compressors the reason why i'm using this is because i like the ballistics that they modeled for each one of these and they're very very clean because you know a lot of hardware usually likes to change the tone of it or add in some saturation effects but I've came to understand with the Native Instruments series, they don't do much in the way of saturation, but they do model the ballistics very nicely. And a lot of the gain reduction and meter movement are kind of similar because if you take two different plugin developers, they may not model the model their stuff the same. So a bus compressor from Native Instruments may sound completely different from the bus compressor in the Fat Channel by PreSonus. So to give you an idea, what I'm using is the bus compressor for this one. I'm going to play the track without the bus compressor. All right, so not bad for where we are right now. I was gonna need a little bit more work, but what I want to do is get the vocals a little thicker than where they are right now. So normally once I treat the main uh, proponents of the vocal, which is the lead here, and I do my Mog EQ trick that I showed in the last video, I do that also for the other major groups like the hook. Um, the next thing I do is run it through this VOC bus here. This VOC bus is a sub vocal bus before I hit the main master vocal bus group. So I like to do any kind of vocal treatment for all of my vocal tracks on this bus particularly. Now the compression is all based on what I want to hear. Using soft tube and NI's various compressors, I've come to understand what each kind of delivers. The two-way allows a smooth shaping and rounding not only a tra transients, but the average level of the voice or whatever you put through it. The very comp is a more extreme version of the two-way, but could have a slightly faster attack than the opto compressor variation. The bus compressor here has a very snappy attack, but it responds back with a lot of rhythm, and that can be based on a release that you have here. So if you have something four on the floor kind of thing where you have an obvious rhythm, the bus compressor is really good with that. The 160 over here, the DBX clone, is really, really punchy, but transienty. So this will give you a lot more consonants anytime you want to use this with the vocal. And last but not least, you have the 1176 clone. With the 1176, we know this is the destroyer compressor. So if you want to bring up noise floor, nuances, breath, everything that we usually try to stay away from or try to balance out, this is what the 1176 does. 
I like to use this if I know I have a weak vocal and I need more energy out of it. So for this, because this is so rhythmic heavy for this particular song, I started with the bus compressor, but we're gonna go through all of them. So you see, just adding that little bit, we're getting about getting around negative 24, which is normally where I have my parallel compression, that adds enough under it in order to push that vocal with the rest of the track and the drums. Now I'm gonna give you a demonstration of what all of these will sound like. Okay, so I kind of give you a little bit of the flavors. And I'm going to bounce now between all uh, six of them. I have five of them. So you can kind of get an idea of the different flavors between each one. So you can kind of understand that as you move through these, each one is emphasizing something different. Well, now what I want to do is give you the trick, give you the reason why I like this technique. So what I was showing you was the way that you can take each one of these, build a palette or an idea or direction that you want to have your vocals go in, and you throw the original vocal that you finally treated into each one of these compressors, and you're stacking the parallel compression together all into these individual modules, kind of like 
a whole bunch of 500 series and they're all going to spit out on this vocal track right here and then once that is done i blend them all with another compressor So you see how this this modular type of idea that I came up with allows you to really build on the average level of the vocal and you don't have to fight with compressors constantly clamping down 6 dB, 5 dB just to get the pocket of the vocal where you want it to be. Everything kind of just comes in and builds on top of each other and you get the qualities of each compressor that you like put it all together in one compressor just to hold everything together and then out you get the vocal that you want. So I hope you guys took something away from this video. This is one of the like big magical things I have figured out just trying to get my vocals to pocket better. When I discovered that this is something that is usable that you can do and work with that makes sense. It gives me results that I'm looking for I'm running with it and we're going to see how far I can push this idea to help strengthen the vocal because that's one of the that was the major flaw that I used to have when it came to mixing back when I was in my um, my undergraduate. It was trying to get good vocals. Now vocals is kind of a thing of the past, but there's always methods to better your mixing when it comes to vocals. And so this is one of those discoveries. So thanks for watching. If you like me, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Hit that like button on the bottom. Hit the subscribe button at the bottom. Go to my page if you want to see some more videos and look forward to the next tutorials. All right. Thank you, guys. Peace out.